you and welcome back to Humankind Both, uh, Exploring the Middle Path. Um, today we're just going to generally talk about how to um, interact with strangers and how to have dignified dialogue with each other and open up our, our hearts and minds to, um, you know, new people. You know, Tom has been here uh, before and we've, uh, once or twice I think, we've had uh, uh, conversations here and today we have Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Jennifer. Um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in Wallingford. I currently live in Bristol and I am now a nurse at a community health clinic. Um, prior to that, I worked as a psychiatric nurse. I actually was oh. on one of the programs here before about um, sort of depression and suicide and bullying in the past. Uh, oh. So so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, my focus right now is just trying to connect to my community and be part of a glue to keep that community together in terms of the health care. Definitely, yeah, I know like loneliness is affecting youth more now mm -hmm. than ever before. Um, Tom, do you want to introduce yourself as well? I'm Tom, uh, a, a Meriden native, uh, about 20 years or so ago, left and did a little traveling the, this, the country and, uh, and uh, the other, another continent. I've come back for a bit, back to the host for the past three, four years, to the homestead. So I'm a resident again, and the idea of community is a lot stronger in my, uh, I'm a lot more keenly aware of it as maybe just an older, more traveled folk uh, person. And I, but I've seen people, uh, community in other places, and some, maybe some older uh, countries and older villages, but community, it's timeless, and it's, yeah. it's, valued, it's valued more as we get a little older. You know, one of my friends um, highlights the unity at the end of community all the time and he goes that you know we we often forget the unity uh, you know it was just interesting what you were talking about what you used to be involved in before I was reading some statistics about youth not only in the US things are rising up in the youth uh, because of loneliness or feeling alienation do you have some insight on that or? I did have a friend recently tell me she's a Christian her take on it is that the depression is definitely related to a lack of, of faith I'm agnostic so I don't know if I completely agree with that but I would agree that the fact that we are disconnected does impact people and the fact that we are sort of disconnected allows a lot of meanness, um, especially through internet and things like mm -hmm. that. So a lot of the youth end up getting a lot of strong messages about what they should be, shouldn't be, and even people being very mean in that forum. The middle school bullying that used to be just at middle school now follows kids home, follows adults home, young mm -hmm. adults. Mm -hmm. And there's oh, even adults, that, you know. Young adults or whatever you want to call 20-somethings yeah. who can't make change anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're uh, still involved. I see the meanness uh, is really related to that middle school age where I had seen it and where I, I can't say if it exists the exact same way, but in high school some other things happen, people develop. But middle school seems to where the... Be where people are testing themselves mostly by being adverse to others through through dominance and uh, it's a uh, it's a breeding ground that some some bullies really don't grow up or some are really made I think around that middle school period mm -hmm. through testing themselves uh, maybe it's our male hormones uh, not working with them uh, very well or not being guided to work them uh, work it out on the playground but I see that same that same level of uh, in the communication that goes on on some Facebook arguments and I'll, I'll be happy to put something out politically that will get uh, get a rise and amazing the people who would just uh, use some of the same playground skills in mm. rebutting an argument. I'm not going to oh, say yeah. what side they're on. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, it's consistently a, a group that you know would rather <laughs> attack and, yeah. and, and not get that discourse. And it's real easy to do it on, uh, on media, far away from the person you're. Yeah, far away, yeah, from that human connection. You know, I'm in early childhood, and you see the terrible twos, right? That's that famous age that they develop this um, naughtiness, you know, <laughs> and it's about themselves, and you know, and and again, that brings me, you know, I'm I'm a Muslim, and you know, I although you know, I I. I, I I partly believe that that loneliness and that 
Um, and that meanness comes from a lack of understanding of a responsibility that we have and then an accountability that we have as well. Not only in this life, but um, after death as well. You know, that, that, we're, that you know, this is a testing ground for us. And how are we using our time and our skills and, and, and what we've been given? Because everything for us is a gift, is a trust. You know, I can't even call my kids my own because they're temporary trust. Everything is temporary here. And, um, you know, but you see the two-year-olds that, that grow that uh, meanness. My son is, two, year olds, is uh, two years old right now, and all he does is hit. And he says, no, 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 no. And you're kind of like, oh, this is a natural process that they're learning something that's going to help them evolve in some way. And at some point, they retain it. And, you know, going back to, like, a scriptural things, you know, you read about Satan, you know, um, in the Quran, he was, the first sin was arrogance, mm -hmm. you know, that he said, I'm better, I'm made out of fire, he's made out of clay, and that I'm superior to, to Adam, um, and I'm better than him. That idea, I think, just comes that we're very tribal, either my family, or, you know, my friends and classmates, or my race. You know, or my religion, or the people in my religion are superior to your religion, you know. Um, that mentality seems to sink in, probably partly because com religious communities are technically dying, and they're trying to keep that control, mm -hmm. you know, saying that, oh, you're the saved ones. And so, you know, it, it makes me wonder, it makes me think, where are they getting this from? Is it appeal to the ego. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, that's a lack of humility. Is, humility is not as fashionable. And, I mean, for me, when I hear, like, humility, I always think of it as a good thing, but I know people who are um, businessmen, or one of my friends is a businessman, when I say the word humility, he's like, bah, and humility. And I'm like, you know, and I understand part of me is like, you know, be confident, I guess is what he means, but I'm right, like, yeah. but, I, but I don't think we're hearing each other when we're talking about communication. I don't think we're hearing each other because what I mean with humility, I see it as a positive and an asset. But when you go in a lot of workplaces or in a lot of community settings, it is not seen as an asset. Yeah. It's seen as a weakness. And I feel like sometimes the most humble people, either the rest of people think, oh, you're just somebody we can walk over, rather than someone yeah. we respect. It looks like a weakness. Humiliation being so connected to humility, it probably is, makes some people averse to it, especially type ones or mm -hmm. achievers, <clears throat> those who are... Uh, those who believe dominance <clears throat> is a sublime state, mm. and it, uh, it 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 reminds me a bit of what you said about the terrible twos, and they often get to well, they they learn the word no from somebody mm -hmm. else and mm -hmm. someone who asserts more power, and they often at at two learn learn that someone okay the adult says now I've got to assert more power right. to get this and maybe in uh, let's say an Aikido fashion to take that. A negative uh, energy or direct and put it in another direction, but no, they learn. Okay, the shot, the one that shouts louder, mm -hmm. got uh, got got the uh, dominance. And, yeah. and, and do so ruling by dominance is an early can be an early lesson. But I think that kills cooperation. That basically kills cooperation. That whole no and power dynamic. It it kills cooperation. It just cuts it off. Yeah, and I think that's the whole part of the ego. Even in Buddhism, annihilation of the ego, like ego death. Most religions teach this, and that, and I think that's where the that gray line becomes like a taboo when it comes to you know religion or politics or you know hot button topics that oh um, you know it's almost like we shouldn't talk about it or shouldn't look at the because m many of our foundations are built on our family structure of our, our built you know do we come from that ideal family structure that's that's you know a, a dad and a mom and then you know kids and you have a home and you know all that kind of stuff your surroundings affect you as well and uh, just like you said i mean in, in your cvs and your resumes you want to exaggerate a little bit otherwise you don't get the job mm -hmm. so you're kind of taught uh, you know uh in school you know oh i want to get the best grades i want to you know, and although that competitive nature can be healthy, if you're not careful, if you have an ego, it can start feeding your ego into thinking that, oh, I want to be the best, you know, and I want to be better than mm -hmm. who? 
What about better than yourself? Better than your, yourself. To be my best. To exactly. change the the to exactly. my. Yeah. As my, as the. Yeah. To be better than I was yesterday. That's about. And that, that shows that's, that's true. Uh, uh, true strength. And from that, I believe humility will come from. Yeah. The, the strongest people, let's say the, the most. I, I, I'm not laying claim to saying this. Uh, I. I'm borrowing it. The most spiritual people are the kindest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, back to, to take spirituality, spirituality to religion. I wanted to ask you about your your Christian friend. Who mm -hmm. uh, are there any Christians that are treated for depression? Of course there are, and <laughs> well, I think so her yeah, argument didn't hold up. Well, I think she she came up with this after I guess Anthony Bourdain and was it. Uh, at Kate Spade, I yeah. believe, mm. she brought that up, and I suggested to her that I thought that another contributor to depression is the fact that we have such inequitable access to things that we need, like you know, healthcare yeah. and food and a safe and clean environment and things like that, and and you know that, and she said, well, they were rich, they had all that, so what does that say? And I'm like. Well, it says that obviously depression can affect you no matter what you possess. Mm. Um, what you possess, interesting, yeah. yeah. What you worked for, what you got, I mean, what you do yeah. maybe could be as more important. What it appears that they had. Or if they're just, I think sometimes depression really comes down to, a, you know, there is a whole biochemical aspect, mm. which I believe that's real, but I also feel like a lot of it comes down to what people feel like they they need to be yeah. to be okay, yeah. and whatever definition you hold, what internal narr narrative that you hold about what you have to be to be okay, can become a prison. Oh yeah. And that if you feel like you can, aren't meeting that definition, and you then you feel like you have no answer. That is the the exact nature I think before the illness will set in. It's mm -hmm. it, it it exists on a this other plane. Um, not to get woo woo, but there's a a person who's just went into the ICU with uh, someone, uh, a father, uh, s some elderly gentleman yesterday, and his uh, they couldn't find anything even with an MRI, mm -hmm. but his his life uh, circumstances are at such a low right uh, at this point in time, he literally is looking for an assisted uh, uh, mm. outcome, but. He was admitted to the ICU for respiratory failure, and no one could figure out there was nothing, no no stroke or heart event. He actually thought he was having a heart attack, but he was in such he'd been in such a state of depression for uh, mm. this this period that I I, I believe that uh, that's where it's come from. It's an, an MRI could not find anything physical as of yet, but this man mm. had respiratory failure. Yeah, it's like mind over matter. You know, if you consistently think negatively you can end up in a more depressed state and if you think positively then you then you know that studies have shown that even if you smile physically smiling more can uh, increase serotonin levels in your brain you know we have melatonin that gets secreted at night so so it could be a deficiency in certain chemicals as you were mm -hmm. you were saying and there's natural ways to increase I mean, saffron, for example, bananas um, are, are, are good for increasing uh, serotonin. It, it, you know, but um, for example, you know, you get the winter blues, you know, here in the Northeast, mm -hmm. you have, uh, you know, the wintry season that, and winter blues kind of is a natural thing that hits people because they, because they get cabin fever and, you know, they, and they want to go on, they can't, they can't do as much. And it, it is in that time that, you know, my grandmother, who was a psychiatrist, always said that please take your vitamins. <laughs> take your vitamins, take your probiotics, and take your uh, DHA. And she said, and you're, for the most part, you'll be all right. You know? And these are old, old Muslim recipes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, the <laughs> other one is she's yeah. a modern, yeah, yeah. A, a, a thoroughly well-versed person. Yes, and I'm yes. Sorry yes. not to, Knowledge. sorry about no, bringing yes. religion up to yeah, uh, you know, connecting yeah. with it. Well, this is a grandmother's wisdom uh, of a great order. Grandmother, but a do doctor. Yeah, right? yeah, and, a do and she's a spiritual doctor too. I mean, for the longest time at CVH, you don't get, that's a lifelong place, you yeah. know, and 80 of her, or 20 or 80 of, uh, of her patients were released, 
and she didn't even use so much uh, allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. She, uh, you know, and, and generally we Eastern people tend to lean towards homeopathic medicine, mm -hmm. you know, more. But even spiritually, Muslims, like we pray five times a day. We have to, I mean, we can pray all the time, but formal prayer where we face Mecca, where we face the Kaaba, you know, we physically do, we have to, we have to baptize ourselves ablution five times a day before the prayer, so you're physically clean. So physically clean, being physically clean, the Prophet said, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said it's half a faith, you know, so clean mind. You don't, you don't get as many diseases or any, at the, and then you're meditating. You've taken time out of whatever you're doing. You're working. To you're focus. To focus on one thing, mm -hmm. on one thing. And there's no, in Islam, when we worship, there's no images in front of you. There's no, um, there's no intermediary. It's just you and God and your prayer mat. So you, it's an escape in a way, and it shows meditation, prayer, builds gray matter in your brain. It's a return to escape from that's exactly <laughs> that true. which yeah. holds us back from our yeah. a greater nature our greater nature yeah, yeah and our greater thing. nature is inclusive uh, yes yeah. use the s word again i i heard cooperation is a sublime state I'll let no darwinian tell you <laughs> otherwise <laughs> everyone feels better when they're cooperating yeah i mean i was going to say i as i was mentioning uh, my friend that i worked with for a long time who um he, he, for a while, he was the imam of the New Haven Mosque. And I always, I always thought, even though like we did different faiths, um, I always really respected that, that five times a day, because to me, that always meant there was that checking in. Mm -hmm. Not just checking in with yourself, but checking into your connection to everything else. Mm -hmm. And that, that can only be a good thing, because most of us are sort of either coasting or lost, like with all these, there's, you know, there's so much going on in this world. Yeah, and, in. you know, sometimes you do need to like, you know, but I like the fact that it is kind of a checking in with yourself, but also checking in with everything yeah, else. Yeah, because when, you know, the better prayer is to do it in congregation. And if you ever seen like Mecca or Muslims praying in congregation more than, you know, two people, there's an imam leading and they follow the imam. Mm -hmm. They cooperate with him and follow when he finishes the prayer, then they bow down with him when he gives the command. And then they, and they rise up. And interestingly enough, even if the imam makes a prayer, the men sh usually say subhanallah, which means that you know, God is holy and that sig signals that, oh, you made a mistake. But if the imam keeps going in the mistake, we have to follow the imam. We have to surrender our own thoughts and ego and that, oh, he's wrong, I'm going to do the right thing, to follow him in that mistake and then afterwards to correct it so you know it, th that to me in itself is it, it always brought our family together as unit because we were five boys you know and then and then the community you tend to share each other's energy and you're following one uh, imam and you're going together so it kind of forces you to cooperate and you don't think about these things as you're growing up as you're taught these things but it it makes you when you're talking to elders for example and they want to say something but you're really excited you you tend to be more submissive and give them the respect give them the platform because you're you're taught this as you're growing up the the whole idea of what what you mentioned the uh, the imam uh, being mentioned once by an uh, if he continues, this is a, a matter of respond, uh, yes. r responsible responses instead of forcing it. Okay, we got we that nudge did not work. We're still uh, we we recognize where we are in the in the course of things, and we are again still that focus of attention. Mm -hmm. People are in that moment, and um, everyone that shows people are listening, but uh, are paying attention. Uh, just the idea of an imam. Uh, so an imam w maybe. Uh, uh, praying from memory, in other words, yeah. and yeah. other people have either a better memory or paying attention to uh, to a prayer book open. Uh, it doesn't so, matter. It yeah. just ha it happens yeah. sometimes. Yeah, because there's a there's but certain number of circuits that you do, and sometimes because you're so involved in the prayer that you forget how many circuits you've done, mm -hmm. or you forget the because we recite Quran in our prayer. So there's like lengthy surahs or something that you might forget something or make a mistake, and you just say it once. If the imam doesn't correct himself, you don't repeat it. You just go go with so it. So it's it shows that you have somebody or the congregation yeah. collectively is expected to be paying enough attention. Exactly. Yeah. And if 
well, just a, a slight reminder that you're paying attention is all that's needed. Yeah. One need not try to grab yeah. uh, anything and change the course, but right. it just shows that we're paying attention. To think that an imam might be doing that on purpose gives me a, a well, sense some of, of them, yeah. mischief, well, <laughs> mischievous. Uh, and right. that's where you come up to the problems of religion and politics mashing together. I mean, you know, you know I tell many people all the time that, you know, consider yourself in Syria, right? Uh, consider yourself, um, bombs are being dropped. You don't know where your parents are, your houses are broken down, you know, and then a religious leader comes up and says, oh, fight for your country, fight for God, fight for something. You know, you, you have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, here we are, we'll give you food, clothing, belonging, you know, we'll give you an identity. And, you know, you know, you think about even here in America, you know, in streets and gangs and things, people that don't say. have yeah. parents and things and they get influenced by these kind of things so it's it's more of a you know some of them jesus said beware of wolves dressed in sheep's clothing mm -hmm. and you can apply that to many different things that some of them are using political agendas and hiding them behind faith and some of them are perp i mean prophet Muhammad said that the clergy would be the worst under the canopy of heaven in the latter days um and so we're kind of seeing that you know there's muslims are fighting muslims and you know, uh, there's sectarian violence, even outside of Islam. Many people I know will say that cooperation is boring. And that's <laughs> the thing, is that more often than not, people want excitement. Mm -hmm. You know, and they want like, and they don't understand that um, excitement is, uh, should come out of righteousness. It shouldn't come out of... Conflict. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. what we get, that's, that's drama. That makes a show adversarial. There's a protagonist and an am. Hi. Yes. Yes. Although, yeah. like, when you're saying the whole thing about boring, I think I was just saying to my husband the other day that I said, I don't take that as a bad thing if someone would say I was boring. Because I remember I had a friend, every time I talked to her, there would be always this stuff. And, <laughs> and she would tell me I was boring. And I said, I, I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay that my yeah. life doesn't have to have all these ups and downs all over the place most of the time. Not that it never has, because everybody at some point has something. But I'm glad if my life is kind of more even keeled <laughs> yeah definitely definitely you know sometimes it's better to be boring than it is to be dangerous not that you're like in a cocoon but at the same time you just want to have balance you want to be able to enjoy this uh path that we've been given this life this gift that we've been given that you want to be able to enjoy it learn from it and not stress out too much nowadays the youth are stressing out more then my my thirty year old sister in law had multiple heart attacks, and we were more afraid of my parents, or or or, or my in laws having heart attack. Mm -hmm. But now age isn't a thing, because of the stress levels, um, the amount of things that people are taking on on their plate because they want to be successful, they want to achieve, they want to be greater. You know what is greatness? You know is is greatness having more money, having more status, having more titles, or being at peace um, and understanding your identity and helping kind of to bring people together. But, you know, in an age of social media, it's kind of <laughs> difficult when you can be anybody you want. True. I like Meatloaf's definition of success. He was asked, uh, how do you feel about success? What's success to you? Success is just how you felt about what you last did. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it's a constant... Thing of being of finding your 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 best way through the next moment or your for what and uh, most people are uh, are conditioned or we get we get a lot of uh, faith put into uh, an investment in the adversarial approach and we we quit smoking because we find a spot or something mm. rarely now the last time I quit smoking to the last two times I quit smoking, <laughs> um, I've quit one more time than I've started thus far. But the, both times were for a reason I thought was great, rather than, oh my God, i got to do this. So rather than an adversarial thing, I didn't hit a wall, I saw a, another goal. Uh, so instead of external measures, it's internal measures. Like something mm -hmm. that's satisfying to your own internal... Mm -hmm. uh, what about, yeah, like when you're driving a car, you look for this, the path that you, you'd enjoy down the road. Even you have sometimes different lanes to go through, but you never wait to hit the, the guardrail <laughs> and say, oops, it's time to get back on the road. And we do that often with, uh, 
with things that maybe are as important in our lives, but aren't as obvious that you're hurting yourself. Mm. We wait to, to hit a row, a wall with, with some situation or with somebody uh, before we, we pick a... Well, the car... The, I, the, I love the, the analogy, the actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a really good my, one. The middle path. Yeah, the, the, middle, the, middle, path. the middle way. Exactly. People have different kinds of sort of natures, mm. I guess. I don't know mm -hmm. how the better way to put it. If you're a little bit of a you know, tough, harder person, that that's a strength. Mm -hmm. But the person who's also a more sensitive person, that's a strength. And instead of trying to make somebody be something that they're not, acceptance. Sometimes it seems like everybody has to be the same, you know. And if you're not like that, there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. I mean, we're all created in different hues and colors and that diversity exists to make us appreciate um, the differences between us and to learn. You know, there's a verse in the Quran that I love reading because it's for, it's for everybody. It's not just Arabs, either children of Adam or all mankind. We've created you into tribes and sub-tribes and, and a diversity of colors so you can recognize one another and learn from each other. And then it says the best among you it's not the Muslim, the Christian, the Jew, or you know the the wealthy, or the you know successful, or the one the one that is the most righteous, the one that does the best deed. Mm -hmm. So so it's your actions. So irregardless of what you believe, in a sense, you know um, if you're doing good things in life, then you're good. Mm -hmm. Then then you have a good hereafter. You have a good place to go here and now, and nothing's after that. And that I have to live my life to the fullest and grab whatever I can. Alexander the Great said, when you bury me, bury my arms outside of the coffin. And they said, why? And he said, because I want people to know that how much am I taking back with me to the grave? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, I've never heard of that. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, that's the... Uh, he wasn't trying to get more for the afterlife, just showing this is what you... This is take. what you take back with you. It's nothing. This is what, so accumulating... Is not uh, and and where's your power? Where's your ego? Where's your status then? It is in the the works you've done that live mm -hmm. on in others. If you have, uh, but it's okay to just leave them leave no mark as well. I agree with that as well. I agree because I'm also in my mind, our society is so about accomplishment, accomplishment, accomplishment. And I'm taking class right now. It's like, what are you going to do to transform leadership? And I'm like, I I'm not trying to just keep going up. I I want to commit to something. Yes. I want to commit to yes. a place, a profession, a people, and not just what can I rise to next. A happy human being is the best gift that they can give to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, it, what is, oh, she had a bad day. So that means obviously you aren't being a gift to the world as much as if you came in more connected to, the, to what makes you smile. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So it is a gift to the world. To, uh, there's a self-care um, admonition in there, somewhat. But you're right. Just finding uh, finding what makes you feel satisfied. Now, uh, some folks do like challenges. I I think I'm taking on a week week's challenge now to try to accomplish something that I believe isn't possible. But um, it's going to be fun seeing what uh, to just for for a while just examining that as a belief and trying to move independently of that let 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 that that possibility exist but just work work at, and it's just as a, as a matter of achieving if if saturday things this week's worth of uh, work didn't get that achievement it certainly have i will be i will walk away with everything i put into it mm -hmm. it may not be here but it will definitely be here if i take it the right way your own goals rather than and always in comparison with other people looking inside yourself seeing what makes you happy you know uh, rather than oh this makes this person happy let me try to do it too because I want the same thing mm -hmm. but it's uh, everybody doesn't have the same goals or the same temperaments or the same and they're not built the same way it's okay to check out okay. hobbies that's what it's life a, yeah, is all it's, about it's not a, as a kid I yeah, had different yeah endeavors and right, there's right. a few things in the basement that I'd love to pick up that right. old skateboard <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. but it's a that that's the smorgasbord of life and I think that's what's keeping people uh, uh, growing healthily is to follow what 
does make their, their spark, the inner orientation uh, yeah. oriented goals, as opposed to don't have that thing on the wall next to that. By, by yeah, this time, I should yeah, have exactly. that yeah. next to that. Yeah. And like materialistic things. Rather well, some than, proof of achievement, yeah, right, right. right? In the academic world, it's very important to have yeah. that wall. Now they have all these sort of breweries. That, in some ways, the one thing about all these breweries that I see that are coming is that it shows that people want to be in a community setting mm -hmm. because it has become a community space. Because also these breweries now too, you can bring your dog, and there's people there, and they just are socializing. The games. It's because it just people people play. do want to to come together. So people are yearning for places to come together that are accepting of, of whoever you are so yeah. so we're constantly finding new ways to um, come together ex at least excuses to kind of come together to connect with each other we'll, we'll leave it at this note uh, challenge the audience to um, kind of get out there meet a stranger learn from them connect with them and see where the path takes you thank you for joining us for this session of humankind both exploring the middle class